Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 9284. Today I'm gonna try to fix this uh, Woody Banshee. It has a crushed GPU here on the side and uh, have another one like it. But uh, that GPU seems fine, but the PCB is damaged on that one. So my plan is to remove this GPU and put the other one on here and hopefully get one working card. So hopefully you can see the damage here, probably screwdriver damage. Was the heating glued on at some point, someone cracked it off and crushed the ship here. So this is the donor card I picked. I got uh, like three of them in, a, in like a box of uh, eBay junk. People, uh, friend bought untested cards like Voodoo twos and Banshees and so on. So I put the donor ship in, the, in my rebuild jig here so I can hold it while I clean it up. So I'm just gonna add some flux here. And then I'm gonna clean my tip and uh, add some uh, leaded solder to it. And use that to just reflow everything. You especially need to do this if you have lead free solder, so new stuff should be leaded here already. But I like to do this anyway. Get also can pick up the big blobs if you saw there. So this just makes wicking easier. Now I'm gonna wait it twice at least. I have about 330 C on my uh, on my soldering iron. Now we can clean it up with some alcohol.
really annoying stuff also gets off. But I don't like to scrub it in first with this because it just gets ganked up. So, so you need to put in put in a lot of effort when you do reballing and like you can't step a, skip steps and make uh, well mistakes. It's uh, the hard part for learning for this for me is that if you screw something up, you have to go back. And if you screw it up really badly, you might have to get another ship. So this looks fine. Should probably clean it on another side too, but that's not important right now. What I'm looking for is um, when we took it off. What I'm looking for is that the ship is flat, so no bubbling or anything like that. Uh, like deformations, delamination, stuff like that, and this ship looks good in that regard. Now I need to replace this mesh with the proper one for this and align that, and then we can do the balling. I'm ready to reball, so I'm gonna add a slight amount of flux to this uh, ship here. And I'm gonna just heat the flux up a bit to make it flow out a bit evenly. So I'm gonna add my this mesh or the here. So I aligned it and so on. It should match on the ship now. So we can add some balls now. Oh, well, let's see if the ball sticks to the ship or not. Well, I can see at least one missing, so we can probably fix that by hand. So, I think that's all the balls. So, let's uh, flow these balls into place. But if you just get them going, it's pretty, I guess, easier. Yeah. 
So we have one over here that didn't cooperate, but that should be fine. I'm gonna add some flux now and basically reflow them with uh, more flux. The problem is if you just like drench them, you don't even do that. If you have a lot of flux or suppose you're supposed to use some yell, I don't have that, sorry. But if uh, you don't like me, and you're a bit of a noob, um, the problem is the surface tension. As soon as it, uh, the flux melts, all the balls likes to go to each other. If you imagine a grid being infinite and the balls being spaced evenly, perfectly, the surface tension, I suppose, would even out. Would uh, yeah, even out between them. But that isn't the reality, so some of them will just come together. That's why you want so little flux just to get them to stick. And once they're stuck to the pad, that is a much stronger bond, so the surface tension can't really do anything. It's like a magnetic bond versus gravity. Like we think of gravity as strong, but consider how big the Earth is. A small magnet has a lot of force compared to its size. So basically, how it is. So now I'm just adding a lot of flux, so we can basically drench them in that and reflow them nicely. I'm just gonna clean that off anyway later to inspect. I'm gonna start here at the problem area, see what happens. More flux, now it should be fine. Yeah. I think it's, it seems to look fine now, but it might not look fine to you on the camera here until you clean it off because the flux creates an optical illusion since it's just like an ore through water. So we're gonna clean all of this off and it should be fine. Now it's reboiled and cleaned. So I think it looks pretty good. Once the balls get to where they should be, it all lines up so it all looks square and uh, shiny and nice. And you can also check like so for flatness, like if I have a ball that isn't higher, higher than other ones, this probably didn't settle properly. We're gonna prepare the ship while we wait for the board to heat up on the hot plate. So the plan here is to add some flux to the ship and flow it out. And this flux will then flow down to the PCB when it uh, when it gets on the board heater and gets hot. Also when the hot air is on. So instead of putting flux on the actual PCB, put it on the balls. So gravity will do the rest. Seems to work. It's a good tip I got. It seems to work. So like I said. So. So I'm just going to use my hot air station to do this so it's low temperature. We just want to melt the flux a bit. So I'm just gonna put the ship aside and get the hot air, uh, get the hot plate here. Once it's uh, the board starts to get up the temperature, so I'm gonna wait to say that twice.
going to place the ship so the board is painted to around 110 or so see and I'm gonna run 90 seconds intervals of three runs the first one is at 100 uh, 180C, the second one is 230C, and the last one is 280C, all at full airflow. So here we have the card with the GPU on. So I actually tried the card and uh, before when I tried it when with the shipped GPU. So you have it here somewhere. It's I think yeah, there's the shipped one. Uh, that card, uh, the card gave VJ dead peeps, and that motherboard doesn't like having no graphics card. Some will beep and keep posting, but that thing has post LEDs and obviously a PC speaker. So this card originally gave post beeps for VGA error and got stuck on posting uh, for VGA error. When I put this in, there was no beeps and it kept posting, but I got no image. I was like, hmm. Then, so I figured something might be wrong with the output. So then I saw this one was missing. This is a crystal and I missed that the whole time apparently. But this crystal is for the uh, RAM deck that is built in here. On the Voodoo 2 you can find the same crystal next to the RAM deck over here, the external RAM deck. And uh, yeah, so I put that in place now. Took that from the donor card, we took the GPU. Uh, also this connector, VJ connector was really like dirty, or corroded severely. So really black and uh, the solder mask had ship start shipping off. So. I cleaned it up completely, took a little while. So the video connector is fixed, the crystal is installed for the RAM deck in the GPU here. So I'm kind of hopeful this is gonna work now with the uh, the fact that it doesn't beep. The motherboard post likes there is a graphics card in there. So yeah, I suppose it's time to test it. So the card is installed. I don't have a fan or heat somewhere right now, we're gonna just post test it so it won't be a problem. So let's start it up and see what happens here. You can't see the postcode but these are all led back here. I could put in a postcard. But this one has a led strip over here with four diodes. And we can obviously switch over to the input there and we have image. So go into the BIOS here real quick. And it looks artifact free. So yeah, basically this yeah, and the postcodes are what I expect from uh, what I had before. I got two reds to green now. And uh, yeah, so it, it seems to work before when I tested it, just that the, the RAM duck didn't work. The crystal was missing and there might also have been a lot of, cor it was obviously a lot of corrosion on the VGA connector, but the crystal is was the fault there and the last fault on the card that we know about right now. Uh, we need to install drivers obviously, but before we do that we need to put on the heatsink. So I'm gonna turn this off again. So before we put on the heatsink, I figure we can have a look at the balls here. So this is the GPU here. 
this is the EPU, PCB, obviously. So you can see the balls here. The balls are 0.65 millimeters. I think the original ones are uh, 0.76, and uh, the reason I use 0.65 is that the mesh for 0.76 I got is apparently flawed in its manufacturing. So I heard it wasn't uncommon. I talked to someone who had the same problem. Where like half the holes are too small, so the balls don't go through uh, the mask. So I just used the smaller balls. Trying to hold this card still isn't easy, I know this. But yeah. So here we can see the balls again. A bit stretched on the outside there. I think that's because the PCB is slightly bent, I think. And we yeah. I noticed that when I put the ship on before flowing in place that something was a bit bent. But yeah. That's our balls. Some are not so bally, but that's fine as long as they adhere both sides. I don't care. Uh, this is my first reball attempt that my that was actually working. So other than memory chips, but of this size. Here we can see some slight damage, uh, but that seems to be fine. Where well, I picked it was the least damaged bench I had of the three I got. It was all trashed. Uh, someone has cracked off the heat sinks and uh, damaged PCBs and all the GPUs to some extent so the one we took off was crushed on that in a similar manner but uh, but in t this damage doesn't go to the balls it only goes uh, like part ways to the one we took off had the balls crushed literally so yeah so let's put the heating heat sink on here so I bought some heat sinks. I have a few cards to do. So these, I did find a picture of this particular card. And it has a 40 by 40 heat sink. Passively cool. So this thing is probably more or less exactly like the original one. And uh, I have some thermal adhesive tape. I'm gonna use it to put it in place. Also bought a few fans, 5 volt fans, so we can hook it up somewhere on the card here. There is sadly no connector on the card. I did probe around on the card, uh, only a 5 volt that was easily explosive over here. For the, that feeds 3.5 or something to the GPU. So we could uh, hook up to the rail there. So my plan is this. So, and then we take these cables over to here. Uh, plus and minus, like so. So I need to find some screws that will fit this fan and heat sink combo first. So I uh, drilled some hold, holes and tapped them and uh, cut off the screws and filed them down so they're flush with the heat sink. It doesn't really matter because the spacing is wider than the ship surface area here. But it's nice to have it flat in a way I think. So it's gonna go on like so. And there are a couple of dots here we can use to line up the heat sink, I think. So now we need to solder the cables into place. few bits left we need to put on uh, this one here I was missing and I should have made an uh, IO bracket here so it should go on too I think the card is done for uh, so we can test it properly install some drivers see what happens 
So we're ready to power it on. And we have signal on the monitor. So here we are in Windows and we can check on our graphics card here. Settings, advanced, Voodoo Banshee. So here's our card, information, 16 megabytes. So let's run a game. So Quake 1 seems to be running. I can try Quake 2. And that seems to be running as fine too. We can uh, try some Quake 3 time demo. So this is somewhat tweaked uh, config file for Quake 3. The performance seems good. It's 640 by 480. And we got 103.7 frames per second, so that's fine. It's a Pentium 3700 at 933 running. The card is finished. Revived from the dead. So this is my first uh, su successful reball of a GPU on a graphics card. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I measured the temp here on the back side of the card on the game and it's around 50C. And the heat sink is about 28. Uh, if we look at the old GPU, which is this one here. These pads in the middle are ground pins, but they're also cooling. And uh, this GPU actually has less of them. Two rows less per side. Uh, it's just ban, sh ban on this uh, here. Ends with ban. If it en ends with ban uh, and a T at the very end, it, you know, it has fewer of these. These are ground and cooling, so they are bias in the PCB. And uh, so the ground, the one ground plate on both sides of the on the circuit board here. So the circuit board actually main cooling for most GPUs of this era. So there's really no point in having a massive heat sink on the front. Uh, if you really want to cool it, you could technically put the heat sink on the back. Or just have some airflow with the case fan over it. So that's why I decided to go with the standard heat sink size. It was easiest and uh, easiest to get that model. And uh, with the fan it's many times better than the original which is passive so this runs more than cool enough now and should last some time so yeah thank you for watching and have a nice day we are going to host a public retro land party in sweden on the 4th of february 2022 so if you'd like to join us you can go to braindrainland.tk and join our discord or check out our facebook page for updates on tickets. You can also check uh, the link in the description to Victor Bart. He made a very nice YouTube video last time he visited us. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.